In today's episode, we're sharing why we're big fans of a 30-day challenge and how it can have a big impact on your marketing. Now, this is something that we do regularly. And as we're recording this, I have just completed 30 days of posting on LinkedIn every single day, which let me tell you was quite some challenge for somebody who's been pretty vocal about my views on LinkedIn. So no doubt we'll talk about that as well. If you're new here, we're the two Lauras and we've been using social media for marketing purposes since before most people ever really considered social media to be marketing platforms. So in this episode, we're going to talk to you about why you should try posting on one platform every day for 30 days, what happened during Laura's LinkedIn challenge, and we'll be sharing four tips to help you do this on any platform at any time. And we're also going to give you a brilliant tool to help make this really easy. This is something that I use all the time and it came in really handy during this challenge. Okay, so let's just take it back a year or 10 (laughs) and talk about why LinkedIn. So Laura and I have bonded over the years of our hatred for LinkedIn. So you can imagine how shocked I was when I was packing my suitcase to go on holiday and I had this ping on Slack saying, I'm going to do a LinkedIn challenge and post for 30 days. (laughs) Because we have always found it a really difficult platform it's just not been our kind of vibe um when we were looking at LinkedIn the other day I went back into my DMs that horrible place that DMs are and I scrolled right back down to the bottom and the first DM exchange I had was back in 2014 so it was a long time ago I've obviously been in and out of that platform over the years but I have never really committed to it. Um, Can I just ask like you that that DM in 2014 yeah. was that a dick pic? No, <laughs> no, it was not a dick pic. <laughs> I didn't think dick pics happened on LinkedIn. I thought oh that was more God. of an Instagram yeah, thing. Yeah, no, they do. Oh, really? Oh, well, I feel like I'm missing out. (laughs) You're really really not. (laughs) Uh, No, I don't believe I've ever had one, although I generally just don't open my DMs on LinkedIn and tend to just do mass deleting. So maybe I have, but maybe I haven't. But no, no dick pigs back in 2014 or in 2022. So that's something. Bonus. (laughs) Yeah, but we've never really... We've just never really warmed to it, have we? It's always been a platform that's been on our radar, obviously, because it's a social media platform. Although historically, it never really was, was it? So we've, yeah, we've never really, it's never really been properly on our radar until Laura Moore decides to go all in. (laughs) So tell us why, like why, why? Well, I'm very much like you. I have never liked LinkedIn I've always found it a bit sleazy and it's always been one of those places where I just didn't like the content that people were sharing. It's one of those places where you would go on and you'd see this post that somebody has been in Greg's and they've been in there to buy a sausage roll and this sausage roll has made them have an epiphany about (laughs) their marketing and it's just given them this amazing story that they have to share on LinkedIn. It's everywhere on LinkedIn though, isn't it? Everywhere. Like Everyone seems to go to Greg's. <laughs> I know. But I often feel like now, because I've obviously tried to spend a little bit more time on there, I think, God, I must walk around with my head in a cardboard box because people can do the school run and have find some way to have a tangible link to a marketing lesson. Whereas I walk around thinking, right, hang on, I'm just narrowly avoided treading in dog poo this morning. How can I link that to a marketing lesson? Like I, it absolutely fascinates me that people must be walking around going, right, I need to write this one down because this is this, I can link this one to copywriting tips. Yeah. Like it's fascinating. But I think because of that, you quickly realise that what they're saying is absolute bullshit. Like it's not true. They weren't really in Greg's and had this epiphany. Or dog shit. (laughs) Or dog shit, yeah. So it it just, the content on there just came across as really disingenuous. And that's why I didn't like it. 
But <laughs> I like writing and LinkedIn is a brilliant platform for writing. So for me, from a content perspective, it really suits like my content style. I am not like I faff about in Canva with the best of you, but I don't l particularly like creating content in Canva. I don't like being on video much happier sitting behind my keyboard, just writing stuff. And I love writing. So LinkedIn for me was the place that I could do that. And a lot of our members are very vocal about their love for LinkedIn. One of our members, Gus, is always telling us about how brilliant LinkedIn is and that we should be on there. So I kind of thought right now's the time I need to commit to this and just go all in and do it. Because if I just dabble I don't get enough from it. And you're the same, aren't you? <laughs> we, mm. If we, Unless we go all in on something, we don't really do it properly. Um, and that's the best way that we find to learn how things work and to really get good results from them over a short period of time. So yes, it was a shock <laughs> to you to hear that I was going to do this on LinkedIn, but it wasn't a shock to you to hear that I was going to do a 30 day challenge because we do these all the time, don't we? Yeah, so we have done 30 day challenges before most recently, it was probably on Instagram, wasn't it? When we did a 30 day Instagram reels challenge. And again, that was because obviously we were, we were confident on Instagram. We've used Instagram for a long, long time, but reels was fairly new still. I think it was probably within the first six months of reels being rolled out and we dabbled around with it, but we'd never really committed to learning, had we? We'd you know, we've got a good idea, but we knew we needed to just go all in on it because we knew that was how we are best to learn. So we did a six, uh, I was gonna say 60 day, 30 day challenge and we absolutely loved it. We learned so much about our audience, what our audience were responding to. We learned so much about the platform. We were able to identify trends. We learned so much from that short because 30 days is quite a short period of time by just committing to it and if we hadn't have done that 30 day challenge we'd probably still be faffing around and not really being as confident as we are now with real so if someone was to say to me I need a reel for this, that and the other. We would just straight away just be able to do it. We would know what we'd need to do. We'd know what our hook was. We'd know how to go and find trending audio, for example. And we'd just go and do it. It would be second nature to us. But that's only because we committed to that and made it this habit that we did it every day. And it got to the point that we were posting. We loved it so much. We were creating more than we needed. Yeah. Like it was meant to be one a day, wasn't it? But we ended up doing you know, at some point posting three or four reels a day on our Instagram, which was amazing. And we saw incredible growth. It was brilliant to do, but just for us, it just wasn't sustainable. Like yeah. we just didn't have the time to kind of commit to that. And I think that's the beauty of a 30 day challenge is that, you know, that there's an end date to it. Yeah. There's no way that we could post on every single platform every single day. It's just not possible. But in order to really get to grips with the platform and really see if it's going to work for you or your business or your client's business, you need to go all in for a period of time to test. And those 30 days are really key, aren't they? So when I did this on, on LinkedIn, I noticed so many things because I was committed to those 30 days. So I got increased connections and they were the right people who I was connecting with. They weren't just randoms, which I thought was typically the case on LinkedIn. We also noticed, which was really interesting, a big increase in our website traffic, didn't we? Like 350% yeah. increase in website traffic. I thought Google Analytics was broken. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason that this is interesting is because I shared hardly any links on LinkedIn, mm. but we still got way more traffic on there than usual. And imagine what would have happened if I had gone all in in order to drive traffic to the website. And that had been yeah. my focus. Yeah, because it's worth saying, your goal wasn't about driving traffic. No. Your goal really was about showing up and being visible yeah. and, and learning. Obviously there was an educational piece, I guess, mm. for you, but yeah. it certainly wasn't to drive traffic no. or to get leads. No, and on that note, I did get leads. I am Amazing. at capacity, so I don't need leads. So I never did any promotional posts, but I got four really good leads during that 30 days, which I passed on to our directory 
But if I had been intentional and been doing a launch or creating promotional posts or sales posts on LinkedIn, then I probably would have got more and maybe even better leads. Yeah, you can understand. Obviously, there's a lot of people in our community who have said to us, it's their main source of of leads. Mm. It's where they get all their leads from or a large majority of them. And you can understand that based on what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. The other thing I noticed, and there's no way to really prove that this is linked, but during the time that I was posting on LinkedIn, I didn't post on Instagram, but I still got more followers on Instagram. And I never linked over to my Instagram. I never talked about Instagram on LinkedIn. But it's interesting that I did get a spike in followers during that time. And obviously I can't prove why that is, but I just thought that was quite interesting to note. So obviously you might be thinking, oh, well, it's all very well and good. You two doing 30 day challenges as two of you. Well, actually, there are other people in our community who have taken on similar challenges. So here's how they got on. Hi, I'm Kirsten Chaplin. I am a freelance copywriter and member of the Inner Hub. And I um, accepted a challenge from the two Lauras to post on LinkedIn for 30 days and absolutely loved it. Weirdly, it's taken, you know, posting for 30 days has taken all the fear out of LinkedIn for me and all the sort of stress of thinking, oh, God, I've got to have X amount of content scheduled. I really just don't schedule further than a day or two ahead um, unless I've got loads of ideas. But generally, I just do it the day before. I've had so many direct leads as a result of posting every day on LinkedIn for 30 days and then continuing to post really regularly. So I've done three or four uh, websites, written three or four websites directly off the back of content um, posts on LinkedIn and um, had other leads too and uh, inquiries about my work and about jobs that I would be interested in. So from that point of view, you know, it's really great. You can see a direct link to what you're doing. So I think if you're nervous, just honestly, just give it a go, but stick at it. I think doing the 30 day challenge is a really good way to get over the fear because it's easy to sort of think, oh, I'll do two posts a week and then kind of drop off. But if you really commit to doing it, I think you'll find it's probably not what you think it's going to be. Hi, I'm Claire Newman from Have Your Cake Marketing and I did the Laura's Social Proof Programme back in February this year. And part of that was a 30-day challenge to post on our own social media channels. So I chose Instagram and literally within days of posting, my engagement rate increased by the end of the month. It was up around about 25% on what it had been previously and lots of people commented on how much more present I was, but also I attracted two dream clients that I'm still working with today. And it really showed me that actually putting yourself out there really does work. Giving content that your clients want and customers your audience need is well worth it because you do attract the people that you want to work with. If you're thinking about what, like, why should you take part in a 30 day challenge, just to kind of recap on why you should do this. This is a really good way to get to know the platform and its features and how it works and everything like Laura said, but it's also a really good um, and easy way to kind of spot the nuances of the platform and how it's different to the other platforms that you're maybe using. It's hard to spot that if you're not posting every day. And it's also way easier to spot trends, isn't it? And what's happening and what works well. So when I was using LinkedIn, I noticed that a lot of people in my feed were sharing selfies, which I thought was a bit indulgent of them, I won't lie, because you don't really see that a lot on other platforms these days. And I thought, well, what they're obviously doing it because it obviously works. So I tested it. And because I was posting every day for those 30 days, I could test it. And on LinkedIn, surprisingly, selfies worked really well. But I would never have known that if I hadn't done those 30 days. And I bet you haven't spotted that in your feed, have you? No, not at all. Like I, so obviously since Laura's done this, I've tried to show up (laughs) pathetically um, (laughs) over the last six weeks or so. But no, I've not been all in on it. I've not been posting every day. I think I've done like three or four posts in, in the time that Laura did her 30. And 
and I'm not hanging around on there that much. So no, I have not seen any, I've seen Laura's face in my feed, but I've not really noticed that as a trend. So I think it's really key to, to realize that when you're all in on something and you're dedicated to something, you are far more likely to learn from testing. You're far more likely to follow and spot trends that you can then implement and test. And by doing so, that's when you're going to see the results, isn't it? And that's where you're going to see the benefit of that kind of dedication by learning and testing. So the more data you can get by, you know, by posting more often is just easier then to analyze, isn't it? Yeah. And also it's much easier to become known quicker if you're more yeah. consistent and you're showing up every day. So because I was posting every day, I was also on the platform every day. So therefore I was engaging every day. I was building relationships consistently throughout that time. And I was getting to know different people as well. Whereas if I'd only been posting a couple of times a week, I wouldn't have done that. And yeah, it's not sustainable for me to post every single day and engage every single day on LinkedIn. But I would never have realized how important those connections could have been if I hadn't have done that. And I wouldn't have made those really good connections. Yeah. And I think finally as well, it's about starting and committing to creating new habits. Mm. And I know this is something you've done a lot of, Laura, recently. And I, I remember when I set up my freelance business, I was committed to posting every single day. That's all I ever said. I needed to show up every single day. And I did for well over a year, maybe even longer. And it was because I created a habit of every single morning, whilst the kids were jumping on the bed watching Peppa Pig, I would dedicate kind of 20 to 30 minutes to creating a post. Now, don't get me wrong. These were the days before reels, before stories. It was just a nice, simple image or graphic you could create in word swag on your phone. So it was a lot easier then. But I just used to sit for 20 minutes, create my post and it was done. And I, yeah. because I'd created that habit, it was easier to do over and over. But you've done it recently for, well, a couple of different things, haven't you? Created this habit. Yeah. Back in the beginning of this year, I did a like a writing challenge to write every day for 30 days. And then obviously I've done the LinkedIn one. But what I do, because I can't find time in my day and I don't actually think anyone can find time in their day. Time doesn't just appear to you. So I'm really intentional. I put time in my diary and I write every day in my diary um, is blocked out from three to four. And that is my writing time. And sometimes I will sit down and I will write at three and I'll finish at four. Sometimes I'll sit down and I'll write at three and I'll finish at five past. But that time is blocked out every single day, including weekends. It's blocked out. My husband knows at three o'clock, I go and grab a cup of tea and I sit at my kitchen table and I write. And obviously if we're out, that doesn't happen. Uh, but we don't very often leave the house. So there we go. But yeah, I do that every single day. But then when I came to LinkedIn, I would write during that time, but that wasn't a great time to post on LinkedIn. So I would then post the following day at seven o'clock in the morning. That would give me time to sleep on that idea, to edit it, make sure it's right to go out and put it out at a better time with like fresh eyes on it. So it's that time you have to put the time in your, in your diary. You have to block that time out to do something like this. You can't set a habit unless you do that. Like you just said, you would post on Instagram every single day whilst you were sitting in bed while your kids were there because, and it became a habit. And by doing that, you were then able to show up for your business every single day. And if you don't show up every single day, someone else will show up. So you kind of set that habit for yourself so that you are the one who is getting in front of those businesses, which I think is really important. But this isn't difficult. Like blocking out time in your diary isn't difficult. The part that's difficult is actually seeing that notification flash up and thinking, okay, I need to sit down and do this. You have yeah. to be really strict with yourself. And I think that's a good tip, isn't it? And the first of our tips that we're going to give you today is that you just need to be intentional. Mm. If you just make a flippant comment of, oh, I'm going to post every day for 30 days, it's not going to happen, is it? If you just say that out loud. Unfortunately, you still have to do the work and you still have to be intentional in about how you approach it and Laura's obviously shared how she's done it to create habits and I think that's really important but you do have to just make set those boundaries for you to do it yeah and I think tying in with that is the whole accountability thing 
like I said to you that I was going to post on LinkedIn and you laughed your head off and like kind of said, no, there's no way that's going to happen. But I also then went and told our, everyone in our membership and there's like 500 people in there who I said, I'm going to post on LinkedIn every day for 30 days. And that made me feel accountable and that I had to do it. Yeah. I bet that you're listening to this thinking, there's no way I've got time for this. You know, I'm too busy for this. This is too much of a commitment. So realistically, Laura, like, and be honest, like how long, once you'd got into the swing of things and you you were establishing this habit, how long would it be taking you every day to do these LinkedIn posts? So at the beginning, obviously it would take longer. Now that I've done the 30 days, I could probably go and post on LinkedIn in five minutes. But I would say 10, 20 minutes max, because you don't need to be in Canva faffing about making an image. You don't need to be, you know, going and recording a video. You don't have to go and put your makeup on or anything like that. You can literally write on your phone from anywhere at any time. So time wise, 10, 20 minutes a day, if that. Yeah. And I think we can all find 10 minutes in our day. Might not feel like it, but we can. So that's our first tip is to really, it's about being intentional. It's not just going to happen by saying it out loud. You have to actually commit to it. Yeah. Okay. Tip number two. Tip number two is, and this will help to make it much easier for you and to make it quicker. So this will reduce that time down. And this tip is to keep a bank of content ideas from all of the other platforms, from other businesses, from your own content as well. And there's loads of ways that you can really easily do this. Like every single platform has a bookmark feature. You can go on TikTok or Instagram or wherever and save a post from somebody else. So definitely get into the habit of doing that, but also get into the habit of actually looking back at those those ideas. So when you come to sit down and you think, right, I'm going to write now or I'm going to record a video now, whatever it is, you're not starting from a blank canvas. You can go and look at the ideas that you've saved up. And we promised you earlier that we were going to give you a tool to make this easier. So head over to the twolauras.com forward slash inspo or just click the link that is in the show notes. And you're going to get the system that I use to do this. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I do this because there's no point in just saving a bunch of content on different platforms and never using it again. So when I use this system, I put all of that content into this system and then you can file it away depending on why you've saved it. So maybe you've saved it because it's got a really good hook that you could use, or maybe the image was brilliant and it can inspire you for something, or maybe the actual topic is something you want to talk about. So go and grab that resource. That will really definitely help to make it um, a lot easier. The next tip is kind of related to that. And that is to repurpose content from other platforms. And we talk about this all the time, don't we? You and I, that you are the only person who will ever see 100% of your content. And you probably will know this because if you go and look at your reach on Instagram, you'll probably be really upset that not very many people have seen your, your post. So you know that 100% of your audience isn't seeing it. So reuse that content that you've spent ages creating and you think it's a great post and you're seeing that the results you're getting are good, reuse it. Don't just let it die. <laughs> Not just your social posts either. You know, if you've Mm. got blogs on your website, you can be repurposing those into multiple formats, you know, reels, TikToks, articles on LinkedIn, posts. You can also look at emails that you've sent previously to people. Can you repurpose those? Did you get a great response from this email? Because if you did get that on social media too, like we don't always have to be looking at reinventing the real um, uh, wheel <laughs> and finding something new. We need to just look at what tools we've got available to help us create new content. It, you don't have to make your life harder. And actually, if you've got a post that's done really well, like six months, a year ago, there's nothing to stop you from just posting it again exactly as it is. You don't have to tweak it. Just repost it because most of your audience will never have seen it. Okay, so our final tip is about posting good content. Now, it's all very well and good saying, I'm going to post for 30 days. But if you post a load of crap content for 30 days, that is not going to do you any favours. You're not going to be testing because you're not putting good content out there. You're not going to be growing visibility or authority because you're not putting good content out there. And you're not really going to achieve anything. Now, what I mean by that is you get 
up on a Monday morning and you're like, oh God, I've got posts today on my LinkedIn challenge. So you just whack out a funny meme or you whack out a motivational quote for Monday mornings. Like there's no point doing that. Happy (laughs) Monday. Yeah, there is no point doing that if you're not going to get anything from that. So just as a, a kind of point to consider really, is when you're stuck for something to post and you have the urge to just whack something out, just always ask yourself, why am I posting this? Like, what do I actually want to achieve? What is my reaction goal? What do I want the audience to do with this post? Because there was just no point posting for the sake of posting. It would be better to do a 30 day challenge and post 29 times than put one piece of just crappy content out to up it to 30 days. Yeah, definitely agree. And you you can quickly spot where somebody's just thought, oh, I need to post. You can really spot those posts really easily. They tank, they're crap. There's just no point in them. It's just somebody sharing a picture of their cat for no reason. It's got nothing to do with anything they normally talk about. Don't be that person. always stop and think, why am I posting this? Yeah, who cares? And if it's just because you've said you're going to post today, just don't post it. It's not worth it. This is your reputation in your business, remember. We'd really encourage you to try posting every day on a platform for 30 days because it can have a massive impact on you so don't forget to head over to the twolauras.com forward slash inspo or click the link that is in the show notes to go and grab that system that i use because that will definitely make it easier for you and in the next episode we'll be sharing some simple tips for a quick cash injection so if you're wondering how you can bring some much needed cash into your business right now then make sure you listen to that